Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, VCDX257 from virtualelephant.com, and in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy an Azure Kubernetes service cluster using Cilium. Let's get started. Welcome to my next video on how to install Kubernetes in a variety of environments. In a previous video, I showed you how to deploy a Kubernetes cluster inside of AKS using the UI. In this video, we're going to do it using this command line interface and actually deploy the cluster with no CNI attached to it so that we can actually install the Cilium CNI alongside this cluster and leverage the built-in tools for Hubble and observability. This is going to give us a little bit more leeway and accessibility within the environment to do things like creating network policies for our containers and our workloads that we deploy inside of this cluster. So if we switch to the uh, Azure UI, you can see here that I don't have an AKS cluster deployed at this time. We're going to go ahead and actually deploy it now, and then we'll see it appear in the UI as we're working through it. So here is my shell window. Now I have a virtual machine, a Linux virtual machine that I've installed inside of my Azure environment that we're going to leverage. And just to show you a couple things, you can see that I already have the Cilium CNI or CLI installed as well as Hubble and kubectl. So this just becomes my uh, bootstrap server that I use for creating and connecting all of the uh, AKS clusters inside of Azure and managing them. In addition, I've actually installed the Azure uh, CLI as well to be able to interface with my account. So the first thing we want to do is actually log in. So I've, now I've logged into uh, my Azure environment through the CLI. So what we want to do is if you haven't already, you want to create a resource group. So you go AZ group create minus L for the region East US minus M and, and you're going to, I'm going to call this Cilium AKS group. Now I've actually already created this, uh, this, uh, resource group already. So we'll just hit control C here, but this is what you would need to do to make sure you have this resource group. This virtual machine that we're on is actually in that same uh, resource group as well. So now we're going to go ahead and create the cluster AKS create East US. And then we're going to tell it the resource group that Cilium AKS group. And then we're going to give it a uh, name. So I'm going to call this one AKS Cilium dash uh, CM for cluster mesh, because we're actually going to mesh these together. Uh, in a future video and then we're going to tell it network plugin none okay so now it's not going to install a cni for us so that we can install cilium after the fact and then we're going to tell it to generate uh, ssh keys and then we're going to go ahead and hit enter and this is going to go ahead and kick it off and you can see here that we have a little bit of a updating information here where it says that it's running it. So the thing that I liked about this when I realized that Cilium was able to be installed inside of Azure um, was the ease at which it is to get it running the same way that I've gotten it running inside of my own home lab environment, which I've shown you in a previous video that I'll link uh, in, the, in this video above. And so as I've talked about in the past, one of the best things about Cilium um, as a CNI is its ability for network policies and its ability for observability through the Hubble UI, which is a core component inside of Cilium. Now, in addition, Cilium has some advanced features um, like cluster mesh. So you can actually mesh two clusters together across um, environments. And I'm actually going to have a video on that shortly using this cluster that we are deploying now to be able to mesh two clusters and then deploy workloads across those two availability zones on those two clusters. Um, and so to be able to do this, I think is just a real critical factor. This is one of the things that I believe takes Kubernetes into the enterprise organizations um, because of the maturity of Cilium and its tooling around, um, around Hubble. 
Now that it's been running for a few minutes, if we switch over to the UI interface, you can actually see now that that cluster that we created on the command line is in here. Now it's still running and it's not yet created. If we click on it, it's going to say that it's still deploying it. But again, we'll continue to let this run until it finishes. So at this point, the AKS cluster is deployed. And if we um, look at it from the UI perspective, and we'll refresh this, we can see that it succeeded and is in a running state. Now what we'll need to do is actually capture the uh, the config file for kubeconfig and copy that into our bootstrap server, just like I did in a previous video. All right, so now that we've saved the config file and I've set the context, we can do a cube cuddle, get nodes, and you're gonna see they're, they're in a not ready state, and that's because there is no CNI installed. So if we do a kube cuddle, get pods minus A, as expected, we don't see core DNS running because there's no CNI, as well as the metric server. So what we wanna do now is actually install Cilium. Now what we need to do is create a shell variable for the resource group. So you're gonna go Azure underscore resource underscore group equals, and then the group name. So Cilium AKS group. We'll make sure that this is set properly. Okay, so we see that it is. And then we're gonna use the Cilium CLI to install the CNI. So we're gonna go Cilium install set dash string and this differs from the documentation so you're going to go dash dash set dash string and then you're going to go azure resource group with a capital g and then you're going to tell it that resource variable that we just used azure resource group close the brackets close parentheses and hit enter and now it's going to install cilium inside of our AKS cluster for us. So it's done it that quick. We can do a kube cuddle, get pods minus A, and we're gonna see now that it's starting to create the Cilium pods on each of the nodes. So if we do a watch, kube cuddle, get pods minus A, we'll watch these run until they're all up and running. So there the nodes are running, it looks like. And now we're waiting for the Cilium pods. They're running. So now it's creating the core DNS containers and the metric servers. So there's metric servers. Pods are running. And so we're just waiting for the core DNS. And now we can do Cilium status. And we can see that we have Cilium and the operator installed. And that the desired one of one, one of one, Demon set, desired three, ready, three of three, available, three of three. So Cilium is now installed. So if we do a kube cuddle, get nodes, we'll see that the nodes are now in a ready state. So now we have Cilium install, installed as our CNI inside of an AKS cluster. So the next thing we're going to want to do is actually install Hubble. All right, now that we have the cluster online and Cilium is installed as the CNI, the next thing we wanna do is actually enable Hubble for observability. So what we do again, using the Cilium CLI, we're gonna do Cilium Hubble enable. And just that simply, it's going to install Hubble for us. We can do a kube cuddle, get pods minus A, and we can see now that Hubble Relay is running inside of the cube system namespace. And we can check the status by doing a Cilium status again. And now we see that the Hubble Relay is installed and running. So with the Cilium CNI installed and Hubble installed, if we want to just quickly check from the local box that Hubble is running correctly, we can do a port forward. Hubble port forward and this will forward the ports for us and then we can do a Hubble status we can see that Hubble looks good and we can do a Hubble observe and we can see that we have Hubble running now the UI is not yet running so we're going to want to install and enable that next 
All right, so now that we saw that the flows are working, the next thing we wanna do is actually enable the Hubble UI, which didn't happen automatically. So we're gonna go back and type Cilium, Hubble, enable, and then dash dash UI. And now it will deploy the UI pod for us inside of the cluster. Get pods minus A, and we can see that it's creating now the UI containers for us. So we'll give this a moment and we can do a Cilium status. We can see that the Hubble relay and the Hubble UI is now running. If we go Hubble status, we see that there are still some flows and we can still see that even after changing it and Hubble observe that we see flows working. So the next thing we want to do is actually enable external access over the web into Hubble through our Azure account and having it go through a load balancer and an ingress controller. And so we'll do that next. All right, so we need an ingress controller running inside of our Kubernetes cluster so that we can expose Hubble externally. Now, Azure has some documentation on how to do this. They use the Nginx ingress controller. So for ease of use, we'll go ahead and use that here. So first we're gonna create a namespace variable and then we're going to, using Helm, we're going to add a repo, ingress nginx. Now that we've added it, we will do an update. So now we will install ingress nginx from the ingress nginx repo. Tell it it needs to create the namespace and that the namespace then there are some configuration things here so that it knows about Azure that we will set go ahead and hit enter and now it will install the nginx ingress controller for us do a kube cuddle get pods and we'll see that, yep, there's our ingress controller now that's running inside of Azure. All right, so using that example, I've created an ingress file for Hubble. So we'll look at this really quickly, Hubble ingress YAML, and you can see it's real basic, right? So we tell it the ingress class name is nginx, we give it a host name, I've given it host.azure.virtualelephant.com, and I've made sure that there's a corresponding DNS record for it, as well as the port number and then the Hubble UI that it's running on. So we'll go ahead and save that, and then you'll apply it um, by uh, kubectl apply, which I've already done. And then if we do a kubectl get service and ingress minus A, we can see that the Nginx ingress controller has that IP address and We've gone ahead and now we see that our ingress object that we've created for Hubble is using it as well. So we should be able to open up a, a browser window and be able to log in and see Hubble at this point. So we'll switch over, put up a new tab, Hubble, Azure, virtualelephant.com. And there is Hubble running inside of our AKS cluster. Now, obviously you don't wanna do this for production. You're gonna want this to be behind a firewall, something that you need to authenticate through. But the purpose of me showing you this is actually just how simple this is to get running here. And again, this is just regular Hubble. This is not the enterprise version. So if we look here, we can see that there's a world object into our in ingress engine X object, which then goes into our Hubble UI. And so this allows us to now have Cilium running inside of an AKS cluster with Hubble enabled to be able to have observability. And this really opens up a myriad of options for us as we talk about running uh, Kubernetes inside of AKS and building out a service offering for our end users to consume from. All right, in this video, I've shown you how to install and deploy an AKS Kubernetes cluster through the CLI and then enable Cilium as the CNI inside of that cluster. 
I've also showed you how to install an ingress controller inside of the cluster, as well as expose the Hubble UI externally for the observability within the Kubernetes cluster. Now, there are definitely a few things here that I've done that you would not do for a production Kubernetes uh, service. But as a way to be able to learn more about Kubernetes, learn more about Cilium and the Hubble observability tool, this is a great way to get started, and I encourage you to follow the steps in this video to enable Kubernetes inside of your own Azure account to be able to gain some of that insight. In addition, that there are some labs that Isovalent, the company that builds and operates the Cilium CNI, has actually exposed, and I'll link to those below in the description of the video, that I encourage you to use. There's several different personas uh, for the different types of Kubernetes operators, cloud administrators, security professionals, et cetera, that will expose you further to Cilium. And you can do those labs and then replicate that those implementations and those feature sets inside of this sort of Azure Kubernetes service cluster running Cilium. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider liking and commenting below and let me know what you thought. Also, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel, especially if you're interested in learning more about Kubernetes, enterprise architectures, and multi-cloud, and how we can leverage these new and evolving tools across a variety of environments that are available to us as administrators and architects. Until next time, thanks.